Well, what's up again there guys, Brian here at 3TR and welcome to another awesome mood review as I'll be giving you my thoughts on the sequel to the 1996 awesome summer blockbuster classic Independence Day. This one's simply being titled Independence Day Resurgence. Now this movie brings back director Roland Emmerich once again. And in terms of the cast members, it brings back some of the original members from the first film as well as introducing a number of new characters. And the main plot takes place about 20 years after the events of the first film, in which we've taken the alien technology from that war, we've applied it to our own, and we've pretty much used it to advance our technological advances. We've created just a whole new, more high-tech lifestyle, we've increased our defenses, and we've pretty much built an entire universal military system, like, alliance, and we're pretty much living, living the good life. However, the aliens come back, they bring an even bigger ship, they completely destroy our initial defenses and pretty much put us back on the defensive and they intend to do something with the planet, which is quite complicated and breaks the laws of physics or science or however you want to explain it. And it's up to Jeff Goldwyn to kind of go around looking for clues in order to find a new way to stop this second, more devastating alien invasion. Now, listen, if you're like me and you were pretty young when the first movie come out, came out, you're going to fit into one or two categories. A, you're going to look back at this film and think it was just a stupid film of the 90s, or if you're like me, and really enjoyed it the first time, this still kind of holds up as a very, very entertaining and fun film. Not a great film, but definitely worth your time, and you're not going to regret seeing it. And even 20 years later, I still think this movie is pretty awesome and pretty fun to watch. If I was reviewing this movie now, I would definitely give it an A- minus at most. However, the problem that this movie has, its biggest problem, is that it failed to really understand what made the first movie so great, and it gets all of its main elements wrong. For starters, there are way too many characters in this movie, and there are too many story arches going on. The first film had it focused on really three different areas that all converged to one place. You had what was going on with Will Smith in Los Angeles, you had what was going on with Jess Goldman in New York, and you had what was going on with Bill Pullman and the White House in Washington, D.C., and they all kind of converged into one spot. Yeah, they did jump to other locations, but they didn't really spend enough time to really diverge from the main plot. This one has so many characters, and it takes place over so many different locations that it makes it really hard to kind of follow what is going on. And because there's so many story arches and so many characters, it makes it really hard to develop any of them in any real significant way. Now, I will say that probably the main plot revolves around... Jeff Goldman's character, who's kind of like the head scientist of our defense system, and he's just looking around for some clues when the aliens arrive, and that kind of goes somewhere. And there are just a number of characters who are there just to take up space. Now, this movie also falls into the same trap the last sequels do, in which it tries to redo a lot of what the original film did, but do it on a much bigger scale. But the problem with that is that it has no emotional weight. The movie is moving just so fast. It, I mean, for a two-hour movie, this movie's pacing is just way too fast. It doesn't take any time to really establish the characters. And when something significantly does happen, it doesn't even give you enough time to really think on it. I mean, when an important character actually dies in this film, it's just like, oh, well, that character is kind of dead, let's move on, because that was just kind of insignificant and was just used as a plot device. There's no real sense of charisma or fun in this movie, and it is apparently obvious that because Will Smith did not want to come back, this movie suffers really badly. It really could have used his charisma and his leading man presence to really add some real energy and life into this movie, because despite all the shooting and actions and all these explosions and destructions of cities going around, you don't really care because, heck, it's been 20 years since the first film, and we've seen this countless times. I've seen plenty of movies have this giant CGI porn fest of destruction. I mean, especially coming from Roland Emmerich, who's kind of the king of this type of movie disaster style, who's done it in, you know, The Day After Tomorrow and especially 2012, it gets kind of unimpressive. And so when the action does start to kick off, you don't really care because you've seen this done, but you've seen it done better. Now, it's not to say that everything in this movie is bad, because if I can say anything that's positive, and that was, it was nice to see some of the old cast members interact with each other, even though it was very, very minimum. And I would say that a lot of the CGI, though used way, way too much, is still kind of good to look at. It's, it's good CGI, and it really is a testament to its time that we are living in a period of cinematic... We're, we're living in, in a cinematic time where you don't really need to have major star power in your movie as long as you have good visuals. 
And I think that's really going to backfire on this film because that movie had some serious star power. In fact, it was the movie that really kind of launched Will Smith into becoming a movie star that he is today. And I don't think that's really going to do any of that to anyone in this film. It just kind of felt like a waste. And it... <laughs> And it blatantly leaves the film open for a third movie. In fact, it, it pretty much flat out tells you what the third movie is going to be about. They flat out tell you right at the end saying, Hey guys, guess what we're going to do with Independence Day 3? We're going to do this. And because they're not subtle about it, I just kind of was kind of disgusted and upset when I walked out of the theater. So if I had to give Independence Day Resurgence a rating, I'm going to give it a D+. If you really want to see this movie, I would just suggest that you go in drunk or you don't go alone, or that you just turn off your brain, get some popcorn and some drinks, and just sit there for two hours and just take everything this movie is going to give you. Because chances are you're not going to want to remember it after a couple of days after seeing this one, because I certainly won't, and I have no intention on watching this a second time. In fact, when the 4th of July comes up again, I'm probably just going to watch this movie again, just so I can forget what I saw about in this film even more. If you like this movie review, feel free to like, comment down below, and please subscribe to me in my future movie reviews. And like always, Thank you guys for watching, you're awesome, and I will see you next time.